In this presentation, we will calculate the federal income tax FIT using tax tables. This is going to be our example set of data. We're looking at the payroll register, focusing in mainly on Bill Smith. Bill Smith, who is an employee, worked 40 hours at 17 uh, rate for a regular pay of 680, three hours overtime, overtime rate 2550 for overtime pay 7650. Total earnings then uh, 756.50. We're focusing here on the calculation of FIT, federal income tax. Remember that's not our federal income tax as the employers, but the employee's federal income tax, which is reported on the employee's 1040 at the end of the year. However, is something that we need to calculate throughout the year, take out of their paycheck as the employer uh, in accordance to comply with the law. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to remove federal income tax in an attempt to uh, match how much is going to be taken out so that when they do the 1040 at the end of the year uh, it will have already been removed and um, so that's what we're going to do first we need to know what the fit wages are which could differ than total wages so total wages is here was at 756.50 it's going to be reduced by those things that are on the 1040 for example typically uh, re reduced for gross pay or adjusted gross income, things like retirement plans and um, the cafeteria plan. So we're going to take those out of FIT so that we can then calculate FIT using the tables. Also note that the federal income tax, when we say federal income tax, it's not the employer's taxes that we pay on our um, tax return, meaning a corporation pays federal income tax, a partnership pays it on a flow through, uh, so does the sole proprietor. However, those are on net income and we're paying the federal income tax for the employees that the employees in essence owe and will ultimately report on their 1040. So to get the federal income tax wages we're going to start with the 756.50 and then we'll subtract from it the cafeteria plan. So we first need to know that so we got to get the cafeteria plan and the retirement plan. So these these numbers we gave these numbers here and so that's going to be the uh, 756.5 minus the 250 minus the 35 would give us the 471.50. So we're looking 471.50 is going to be our actual FIT wages. And then we're not focused so much on the second employee, but if Pam had 280 and 185, same type of thing. We're going to say 3653.85 3 minus the 280 minus the 185 gives us 3188.85, 3188.85. So these are the numbers we're then going to use to look up our tables. Now that we have these numbers, we can go to our tables and look this up. Now, and there's the totals here. So if we go to our tables, they look like this. And uh, we're, we're focusing in here on uh, this, this first FIT wages and looking this number up in the table. It's important to note that we get the right table uh, we have to, if we go through the circular E to find this, and you can go onto the irs.gov website and find it, the current uh, circular E, whatever the current time period is, and then go to the brackets and find the correct tables. There's going to be a ton of tables because uh, we're going to have to have a different table for pay periods. So we'll need to know uh, when the pay period is. Ours, we're going to say, is weekly in this case. Could be bi weekly, could be semi monthly, could be monthly. Uh, just make sure not to mix up semi-monthly and bi-weekly. They're different. <laughs> so you want to pick up the right, uh, the right table there. And uh, then we need to know if the person is uh, single or married. So again, there's going to be two separate tables for each pay period based on single or married. And note all this complexity is basically because of the complexity of calculating the tax. Um, it's, a, it's a progressive tax system, so we have to somehow figure out uh, how, what the tax brackets do and one way to do that is with the tables. Clearly uh, it's a lot easier to have software that will automatically look up this information for us but it's still important to kind of look this up and try to figure out why the tables are this way so that we can understand it and if we do any tax planning it's important for us to have some concept of, of what's going on here. So we're going to look for this 141 within these two sets and then find the number of exemptions here, which for Bill is one. So we're going to say that uh, it's going to be between the 470 and the 480. It's right in between here. 
and that's going to be the exemptions one will get us to this 300 or this 35 dollars so on this one paycheck we're going to withhold 35 dollars also note that if it was on the 470 like if notice 470 is here twice so you might say well should we pick the 34 or the 35 typically we'll pick the higher number and that's kind of like a conservative type estimate we want to estimate on withholding too much than too little we would rather have our employee get a bigger withholding or bigger return on their 1040 at the end of the year than paying because that's probably more likely to cause us problems so typically we'll withhold more than less you might ask well this is kind of complicated what if i picked up the wrong number uh, it, which is possible <laughs> like if, if we were doing this by hand if we picked up the wrong number it would kind of watch itself out at the end, the FIT. It kind of works itself out in a way because when we do the 1040, we'll have the, we'll have the total withholdings that will match up to what the actual tax calculation was based on our 1040. And if we withheld too much, then we'll get a more of a refund. If we withheld too little, then we'll owe money. And uh, so that's gonna, we want it to be right on target because we wanna give our employees as much money as they can in their paycheck or if we are the employee we're trying to calculate our payroll to get as much as we can in our paycheck and not owe any money at the end of the year getting a refund is not the objective the objective is to not pay penalties and interest at the end of the year and if we end up owing a lot of money we could then end up paying interest and penalties um, otherwise we would it would be better for us to actually not pay until the end of the year because then we get to hold on to our money longer and invest it and, and and possibly make money on it so that's why that's why we have to do the withholdings the irs wants their money sooner and therefore we have to do these withholdings and get the money to them uh, as the time passes so this is going to be the 35 then and so we're going to uh, put that into our information here so we have the FIT and we're gonna withhold the $35 from the FIT on our table.